Hello guys, welcome to my YouTube channel once again. And in today's tutorial, I'll be showing you how you can design this burger flyer for social media using Coral Draw. If you've not subscribed to my channel, please kindly subscribe by hitting the subscribe button and uh, don't forget to turn on the post notification so you don't miss any video I'll be dropping shortly. Without further ado, let's get started. First thing, first thing first, uh, to start with, click on File, click on New. So with this flyer, first things, I would like to give it a name. So I'll give it Burger Flyer, since that's exactly what we're creating in this class, since that's what we'll be creating today. So the width will be set to 4 and the height 5. And don't forget, please, it's set to inches. The resolution stays at 300. Haven't done all of this. I'll proceed to click OK. Having done that, the first thing I'll be doing now is to double click on this rectangle as practice I've done in the past. Double click on it and I'll be giving this a white color. So I'll just come over to where I have this here and just select this color and I'll remove the outline. Now guys, first things first, I would like to I would like to start with the background first and which is this. So I'll come over here and give it this yellow color, but I won't leave it at this yellow. I would like to mix color, to mix this color because I feel this yellow will be too bright for what we tend to achieve with this particular design that we're doing. So what I will do is I will simply come over here to where I have this orange. I will hold down my control key and press and just click on the orange. Now what this does is it actually mixes up with this orange, it's like I'm mixing the colors together. So I'll just press once again and um, I think at this point I'm cool with what I have. So guys, the next thing I'll do is uh, selecting, I'll come over to where I have this transparency tool and I'll click on it. I'll just drag and drop like this. Make sure the black part is on this side and the white part, that's the visible part is on this side so we have our background ready so next thing we'll be doing is we adding text to this our background and to start with we'll be starting with the burger text so i'll just click on anywhere inside my design page and i would type burger and guys uh lest i forget the resource file i use in this design is attached to the description of this video so do well to find it and you can actually use it to practice on your own and you know guys keep practicing because practice makes perfect so um the the font i use is lemon milk i also attached it to the design so i'll use lemon milk i'll change it to the bold um yeah this is what i used or well, if you don't find the italic you can just use the bold and change it to italics here as you can see mine is already in italics so what I'll do is I would uh, use the shape tool, click on the shape tool and drag this inside a bit so we don't have too much spaces between the letters. Click out, zoom out to see exactly what I'm doing because I want to increase the size. So I'll just come up here and change the size to 50. Because I um, haven't done that, this is the size I want to use for this burger text so the next thing i'll be doing is i'll be changing the color so i'll come over to where i have the color here this orange i'll select it and the next thing i'll be doing is i'll be making duplicates of this particular text so guys how would i do that i'll select uh se selecting this uh present burger text i will press ctrl c and ctrl v to make a duplicate copy of it and I will bring this down holding the shift key guys the reason why you have to hold down your shift key is so that this doesn't go out of place for example when you take your hand off the shift key it goes out of place but I don't want it like this like that I want it straight like this and aligned so that's why I have to hold down my shift key so guys the next thing I'll be doing is I'll be um, applying the blend mode to it you can find your blend under uh, this tab where you have your shadows, so you just scroll down after the contour, you have the blend. So I'll select the blend and I'll just drag and make sure you are dropping on 
the other text. So guys, don't worry if it's like this. We just have to set the uh, acceleration of this particular blend. So we just come up here where you have uh, blend objects. And I will change this from 78 to 5. Just click OK. So I think 5 is too much. I would uh, make it 4. So I think this is OK like this. Uh, so the next thing that I'll be doing now is to convert this to curve. So currently selecting this, make sure you're selecting everything like this. You can drag out and make sure you're selecting well. Currently selecting like this, I would come over to where I have uh, convert to curves. Guys, the shortcut is Ctrl Q, so I'll just press convert to curves. Now what this has done is it has converted all of this text to curve. So I can easily um, add effects to all of them at once. So guys, this brings me to my next step. I'll be applying transparency to this text. So what I'll do is I'll just come down here to where I have my transparency tool. I'll click on it and select the first one that says uniform transparency. As you can see guys, so I'll just bump it up from uh, selecting the first one, uniform transparency. I'll just come here where I have the transparency itself and I'll select, I'll just type in the value 80 and click OK. Okay guys, uh, having done that, next thing we'll be doing now is to make sure we power clip this inside of this rectangle. As I mentioned earlier, it's a good practice to make sure that everything you're doing is power clipped inside what you are actually doing. That's the first element, that's the first rectangle inside your design. It just helps you maintain balance and your design is clean and it's well coordinated. So what I'll do is I'll just right click on this and uh, Right click on it and click on power clip inside then you see this arrow this arrow will come out and you just click on the rectangle itself as you can see guys if i drag this rectangle out as you can see it's currently inside of this rectangle it has been power clipped inside so guys having done that uh, we'll move to our next step we'll be typing the next uh the next text that's burger empire so I will select my text tool and click anywhere around. You can just type, you can type outside, you can type inside, anywhere it's fine. I will just type Boga and Empire. So guys, uh, the text I'll be using for this is Maski. I don't know how you pronounce this, but it's spelled like this. It's attached to the resource file embedded in this with this with this video so what i'll do is with this is i'll just uh select my shape tool and drag this up a bit like this so i won't have too much spaces in between them so guys I haven't done that i'll come up here and uh change the alignment to center okay so uh, guys, I feel this bugger inside here, I will have to uh, apply, increase the level of uh, transparency I apply to you. So I'll just double click on this rectangle, select it and click on transparency and I'll increase it to 90. So just click OK because I don't want too much of it. I think this is fine like this. So the next thing I'll do is I'll be changing this from 24 to 30. Mm, I think let's do 40. Okay, good. Um, I'll just manually um, increase this a bit uh, by holding down the shift key and increasing just a notch like this. And I'll position it at this point. So guys, having done that, I'll be applying the next step to this design, which is bringing in my brush. So attached to that um, resource file is uh, the brush I attached to it, which is this um, SVG file. So I'll just drag in and place here like this. Guys, this is how the brush is. I'll just adjust it, make it big. And I'll increase the size like this. I'll increase the size for them all just till it fills up half of the page 
and I'll just give it, I'll make sure I'm giving it the same color as I have here. So guys, how do I achieve that? What I'll just do is I'll just come over to where I have my eyedropper tool, select it and select this color here. We we'll just click on it and apply it to this. As you can see guys, I now have the same colors for both of them. So what I'll do is, since I have these things already power clipped inside of this shape, what I'll be doing from now henceforth is I'll be pressing Ctrl X to cut it, double click on the rectangle and I'll just paste it inside. Or better still, as you can see I have power clipped it inside of this rectangle. Or better still, you could use the other method, which is right clicking on it and selecting power clip, then click on the rectangle itself. Either ways works best for this. So I'll just bring this down a bit to this level and I'll leave it like this. So one thing I want to do is I want to um, reduce the point of which the transparency I applied to this rectangle is at. So I'll just click on transparency back and I will bring this down, this black part, and I'll bring it down a bit up onto this level. I don't want any of the orange color at this point of the design. So I'll just leave it at this point and I'll click out. So what I can do again is I'll drag this up a bit and double click on the rectangle to drag this text that I power clipped inside. I'll drag it up a bit. When I'm done, I'll just click out. Or what you do is click on finish. So I click on finish and I'm done with that. Okay guys, we're already halfway through this design. So next thing I'll be applying is another text. We're just applying our text for now. So uh, this next one, I'll be typing Empire. So I'll just type Empire and I will select the font I used, uh, which is um, Dalmatians. I'll select it here. Yeah, this is the font I used. So what I'll just do is I'll just select this um, yellow color like this and make it bigger. What I'll do is I'll make this like a watermark here. So I'll just have it somewhere here and I'll reduce the transparency by clicking on this first one that says uniform transparency. As you can see guys, this is exactly how I want it to be. So what I'll do now is select the pick tool Selecting the pick tool, the shortcut to go back to the pick tool is selecting control and spacebar. So when you are on any tool, if you press control and spacebar, it takes you back to the pick tool. And you can also press it back to alternate to the former tool you were using before, as the case may be, which is the transparency for me. So I'll just select control and spacebar, click on control and spacebar to take me back to the pick tool. So I haven't done this, I'll press Ctrl X on my keyboard and double click on the rectangle to open up the power clip and I'll just press Ctrl V to paste it inside and when I'm done, I'll click on finish. Okay guys, um, it's time to bring in our elements for the design. So the first element I'll be bringing in for the design is the burger itself. But I can have, I can bring in all of them at the same time, but I just want to make sure it's orderly but you can choose to select and bring all in at the same time i'll bring this in first um, having done that i'll reduce the size like this and i'll place it here like this i'll reduce the size a bit more somewhere around here is nice and yeah we're good to go so i will proceed to bring in the other elements which is this and this so i'll just drag and drop inside like this okay having done that i would resize them bit by bit and guys there is uh, one simple trick inside coral draw for example, now I brought this in and I just resized like this, bringing the size inside like this. If I want to have the same resize like I applied to this 
on this one all i need to do is select this one and press ctrl r so ctrl r in coral draw means repeat so i've repeated exactly what i did with this if i feel i still need to reduce this uh a little bit more i would reduce like this to this point and i'll do this to the same like this but i won't reduce. i just press ctrl r and it does the magic for me so i'll just put this where this needs to be i would select the object and click on this click on it again to bring out the uh, transform options and click on this one that says rotate so i'll just rotate like this not too much you can actually change the value the the uh, value of rotation here so with mine i'll just give it 350 okay guys i'll leave it at 350 and what i'll do is i'll right click on it and i'll click on order and click on order i'll click on behind and i'll select this bugger telling corridor to place it behind the bugger itself so having done that i'll just click on shift and use the arrow keys on my keyboard to bring this up a bit to this level i think i'm cool with this and I'll bring this up a bit. So guys, the next thing I'll be doing, I'll be doing the same thing I did with the chips also. So I'll just rotate. This time, I'm going this way. So at this point, I'll reduce a bit. And just make sure it's almost as the same size with this having perspective in mind. So I'll have it as the same size with this too. So what I'll do, I haven't done that. I'm good with the adjustment. I'll right click and i'll select order behind and i'll select debugger as you can see guys so what i'll just do is i'll use my arrow keys to bring it up a bit um make sure it's not totally behind the bugger i can move this up a bit just do well to move it up a bit so there's like um white space between the burger empire and what you have here now having done that the next thing i'll be doing is to make this um burger and everything we have here these three elements more realistic i'll be applying a drop shadow to it and how do we do that the first thing to do is select the ellipse tool here and i'll just drag like this to form a floor shape or better still hold down your shift key you can draw anywhere inside of your page haven't done that go back to your pick tool and drag down like this to this point i'll bring it down a bit more i think i'm okay like this so i'll just place it here i will resize from the edges like this and drag like this i'll just the next thing i'll do is i'll be applying color to it so i'll just give it black because it's actually supposed to be a shadow so i'll make it black and of course i'll remove the outline now the next thing i'll be doing is i'll be applying transparency to it i'll click on it transparency and i'll select the first one that says fountain fill and having selected fountain fill make sure you're selecting fountain transparency first then Having done that, select the elliptical fountain transparency. I'll just click on it. And guys, if I zoom closer, like what you observe, it has created this um, shadow, this realistic shadow, the casting shadow of the bugger itself. So what I'll just do to just uh, improvise, I'll click on this white part and I would increase a bit because I don't want it to be too dark. Um, I'll set the value to 30 and click OK. Having done that, I'll click out and I'm good with this. The next thing I'll be doing is I'll be adding a effect to it. So I'll just go up here, click on effects and click on blow. I'll select Gaussian blow and I'll leave it at five. I'll just select five here and click OK. So make sure the radius is five. So I haven't done that, I'll come to the edge like this and hold down my shift key, select and right click to make a duplicate of this particular shape. I'll do that again, come to the edge like this, hold down your shift key and 
drag in and right click to make a duplicate shape of this and guys that's another way you can actually duplicate objects inside Corel Draw. so i'll zoom out so i see exactly what i'm doing clearly and one thing again i observe is guys i need to um, apply more transparency to this text here so it won't um, take the attention away from the main thing inside this flyer so i'll just come over here to where i have it select my transparency and i would make it i would type 70 so i'll just make that 70 and i'll just click on finish as you can see guys i've reduced the transparency of that text so guys the next thing i'll be applying is our final element so i'll just go to where i have it and i'll bring in the first piece of onions so i'll just drag and place inside like this what i'll do is i'll drag to the edge like this where i have it you could put yours anywhere but i choose to put mine here so i'll control x because i want it inside the power clip and double click on the rectangle and paste it when i'm done i'll just click out like this i think i'm done like this so another thing i'll be doing is again again is i'll be selecting all these elements that's the, the chips the burger and the drink and the drop shadow so i'll just uh, select all of them like this you can drag out to make sure you're selecting everything as you can see i left the chips that's why it's important to always uh click out so i think at this moment i've selected everything i'll drag out again and make sure i'm selecting everything having ensured i've selected everything i'll just click on ctrl x and double click on the rectangle and ctrl v to paste it so having done that i'll click on these onions make sure i'm clicking on the right thing select to drag to make sure you're clicking on the right thing and i'll press ctrl sh um, shift page up to bring this up to the top of the page so it's directly above this burger having done that i'll click on finish and guys before, um, lest i forget please uh, if you like this video if you like the process of this video please don't forget to hit the like button on this video it helps the algorithm to show this video to more persons that are interested in growing their skills using Corel Draw. thank you very much okay so uh, the next thing i'll be applying here is the last text on the base so i'll just bring out my type tool and i'll be using uh, i'll be using this font if you've not watched my past video the one i did on how to design uh the burger the valentine uh flyer you could watch that i under that uh, particular video i gave resource file the text i'm going to be using now is under that video so you can just scroll through and just get the text so i'll be using this galano grotesque Okay guys, having done that, as you observed, um, I just had free drinks and fries, those open at night. The font I used is this Granolo Grotesque. So if you've not had this font before, it is attached to like the Valentine flyer I did like weeks ago. So you can just find the text there and apply it to your design. It's just good to use good fonts when you are designing anything as regards social media. So guys, the next thing I'll be doing is, because we are like 90% done with the design, is to apply the lighting effect. So before I proceed with that, what I would like to do is, I would like to um, increase this element a bit. Because so what I'll just do is, I'll just select all of this like this. And I'll select well. drag out to make sure you're selecting the whole thing and press ctrl g to group them having grouped all of them what i'll do is i'll just um, increase from the edge like this and drag up like this to this part because um, i want it to be more pronounced inside the flyer 
Having done that, I'll click finish. Uh, so what I'll just do is I'll need to reduce the size of this text. So I'll just bring it down a bit and leave it at this point. So guys, the next thing I'll be adding to this design and the final thing I'll be doing in this design is adding the lighting effect. So the first thing I'll do is I'll head over to my ellipse tool, select it and I'll hold down my control key to draw a proportional shape that's a perfect circle and select the pick to come over to where you have your colors and select this yellow guys. Select this one and remove the outline. Always make sure you remove the outline when you draw out these shapes. So the first thing I'll be doing here is I'll select the transparency tool. I'll go over to where I have fountain trans transparency and also click on elliptical fountain transparency. And I'll set it from normal, set the blend mode from normal to screen because I need it to have a lighting effect. So what I'll just do is I'll just drag this over here. This is the first point I'll be adding my the lighting effect to. I'll add one here and I'll drag one here and put one here like this. I would also bring one to this point and add it here, I'll make it smaller. And, and I'll also put one here too. You can resize this, drag this to this point. And I'll also be adding one last one to this region where I have the greens. So what I'll do is I'll just select this to this point, then right click to make another copy of it. Then I would use my eyedropper to, to select the light part of this green. Select the light part, as you can see it's selected. I'll just give it to this light. So guys, as you can see, that is what I used here. So I can try I can transfer this, duplicate this to another region here and make this smaller. So I'll just click on it like this and make this smaller. Or better still, I can come over here to where I have this yellow and use this yellow here instead. Alright, guys, you can go uh, on and on and on using this um, applying lighting effects to this, but just make sure it's not too much, it's minimal. Um, so um, you don't have lights everywhere and we don't get to see the bugger and everything. So guys, to make sure it's minimal, I can always reduce the lighting and just drag and reduce it. Make sure it's not too much. I'll drag this in and reduce it. So I can just leave this one and this one here. You can go ahead and add um, some and guys um, I forgot I have one last element to add here so I'll just select this last one here this is what I forgot so I'll just drag in and I'll drop in here I would move to this place and ctrl x to cut double click and I'll just paste it here and I'll click out and guys, also I'll be I'll be I'll just make a duplicate of this lighting. Control C and Control V, and drag this up here a bit to just give it that effect here. I'll do so that it's not outside of the page, and I'll just drag to this point like this. Or instead of being there, I can put it here. Guys, whichever way works for you, it's fine. Okay guys, so having done all of that, um, always make sure when you're designing, um, have it at the back of your mind that less is more. So you don't need to have so many elements going on inside your design for you to actually make a statement. You can have just a few things in your design and your design comes out looking wow. So without further ado, that brings us to the end of this particular flyer design session. I'll see you in the next video. Please don't forget to hit the like button if this has been helpful to you. Share and um, subscribe.